Hi all, Tech Terror down here, and we are going to be working on a quick demo of Anenix. And this is UI animation that you can do in Figma. So if you're familiar with other UI sort of animation tools, so anything like a dynamic GIF logo, like the one we're going to create here, this example I made for the Google logo using these dots, is something that designers at Google might do to animate their logo, but you could, you could do this for really any logo. It's become pretty popular over the past couple of years. And so Anenix allows you to actually create these animations inside Figma. And this is great because before you would have needed to use an Adobe program that's a lot more complicated. An example of that might be some combination of Illustrator and maybe some After Effects to make these logos dynamic. I've made a few myself and they're quite complicated. A lot of features, but I think Anenix is a great way to do this pretty simply. So let's jump to the demo. So the first step you would want to install uh, Anenix UI animation. Once you have it installed, you can create a design file. Once we're in the design file, we want to run the plugin on our frame. So once I'm in here, I can click on the frame. I can right click, go to plugins, hit Anenix. It's going to want to create this project that will allow it to create. We'll click through these uh, new features. And you can see actually that a new window has popped up. I'm dragging it around just so you can see, but a new window has popped up where we'll actually be creating the project. So important to know when you come into a Nenix, everything in here needs to be already preset and ready to go. So before we start animating the different vectors and layers in here, we actually need to drop some in first so that we can move them around. So since we're creating that Google logo, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a picture of the Google logo that we can use. I want to remove the background of this image, so I'm going to use Remove BG, which is another video and another tool that I love a lot. So I'll copy that image. I'm going to drop back into the demo file and paste that in here. So I just want to get all my assets in here sort of ready to go. So I'm going to keep it here in the middle. I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, it's not a perfect vector image. It's definitely a PNG, but that's fine just for the demo, just so you can see how quick we can do this. So I'm going to draw a couple of circles here. And so these are going to be my circles that are going to animate and come into it. So I'm just going to create four of these real quick because these are actually going to be the shapes that I use for the file that are going to be flying in. So for each of these, we can then grab them, use the little eyedropper tool here just to get the color right for each of these. These will be flying in the screen and will be the ones that will be displayed. And so once we have these colors picked out, we will just leave them right there. Now, it's going to be helpful if we have some sort of helper guides to show on the logo. So for that, I'm actually going to make some that display in this way because I'm going to want to hit three points on the G, which will make more sense when we're animating. Just like that. So I'm going to drag more points in here. Now I'm just option clicking because that makes it pretty fast to drag those points in. If you hold down option, that's going to allow you to duplicate very quickly. And so I'm just dragging these in so that I can reference them later. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So now that I've grabbed these, I'll flip the color again, just so I know these are the points there. And I'll drag these in, finish up for the G. Okay, perfect. So now that I've got these, Again, we'll just recolor these just so they show up nice on the logo. All right, so now that we have all of our assets here, we've got the image in the back, we've got these points that are going to fly in, and we've got these helpers set up here. Now I can animate that frame, and it's going to look a little bit different once I go in here. So I'll run that plugin again. And once we run that plugin, it's going to create that project. And now you can see all those different items here to the left, so all those different ellipses. Okay, before we start animating, I'm going to do a couple things here just to make it easier so that we know what we're grabbing. So I'm going to click on this top ellipse, and I can see that it's this one, so I'm going to change that color to red. 
just so that I know that that's my red ellipse. This one I will turn into my yellow ellipse. This green one I will then find and turn into the green and the blue. Same thing here. Oh, there it is, number four. And we'll turn that into this blue color already. Perfect. All right, so we have these, and I want them to fly in from the side. So I'm going to grab these out, hold down the shift, move them out. And once I've got these spaced out the way that I want, perfect. They're on the outside of the boundaries of the frame, so they're going to fly in from the sides. It's going to give it a really cool effect, so it looks like they're coming in from off the page. All right. So now that I have that done, I'm actually going to lock this image. So that way I don't move it around. I won't select it. You can click this little lock icon. You can also to toggle it on or off if that's helpful as well. But I'm just going to do that. And we're going to start actually up here with this first ellipse. So you can see that it's off the page here. If you click show all, this is telling you the different animations that you can do within an Enix. So there's a lot of options here, fading growing, scaling it different ways. So for this one, I'm going to be fading the position from the top. So I want to fade it down. And you can see now that there's two circles that have come up on the top section here. And this is actually the path that it is going to follow. So you can see here, I've dragged this down. And if I want to release it, if I grab here on the time frame, I can see what that's going to look like over time. So I'm dragging here, you can see that at second zero, it starts off the page and it grows until it hits about second 0.5. And you can see it's, it's going into that space that I've selected, which is great. So cool, so we've done one, now we need to do the others. So I'll grab this blue and I want it to start in this position. I'm gonna be starting at the position so they circle around. So this one, similar effect. I want it to fade position left because it's coming in from that side. Again, I'll click on it. And now look at this. I've actually grabbed the wrong point here. So easy to tell is that the position that you're going is going to be the circle that is not connected to the square or the vector image. So instead, I'm going to grab this other circle, which tells me, okay, that's the path. Great. I want it to be over here move that vector image so that it starts here again. Perfect. And again, I can just move that slider and it's working the way that I want it to. So that's great. It's sliding into position. Now I need to always remember to go back into the position that I want. So I'm back at this second zero. So now when I click on this and I want to animate it again, I'm going to do fade position up. Again, it had shifted my image down just a little bit, but I'm using this helper to show me putting it at the top left there. Okay, great. And now I want to select my yellow. You can see it over here. Again, I'm at second zero. And I want this to fade in from position right. And let's see if I grab here. Good, I've grabbed the right one. I'm going to start it here. And I'll drag that shape over. Okay. So let's see how it looks so far. So these are going to fly in. Great. And actually what I can see is that the green I've actually made a mistake on and it's flying into the point too close to the yellow. So easy enough. What I'll do here is just click on ellipse three. You can see those come back up and great. I just need to move this over here. And so now we've got it in a really nice position. All those slide in just the way that we want it to. So that's perfect. All right, and so now we need to animate all the next steps. So we need them to move along the edge here. So we're going to do that in a couple different steps. So again, I want to start with my blue ellipse. So we know that's ellipse number four. So I'll click here. And what we wanted to do is we want it to actually move. And so what we can do here is we can add another position to it. So you can see that there's two things going on here. It's changing the opacity as it comes in. And it's moving the position. So if I click on this icon here, that's going to add or subtract a position. So I actually want to space this out just a little bit. So at second 0.857, I want to add a position. So I'll click this button here. And so that's going to allow me to actually get this circle where I want it to be. So I'm going to then 
take this and move it out to this position. And so if we play that now, you can see that that blue goes out to position one and then goes to position two. And so then let's move out a little bit further. We then want it to go to position three. So we'll do the same thing coming down to position at that point there. It adds this circle here that we can then drag down. And so now it's moving into position three. So great. Off the frame, position one, position two, position three. All right. And we want to do that for the other colors as well. So this is where the helper guides really come in handy. So I'll scroll down. Now we're at ellipse number three, the green. We want it to be lined up perfectly timing wise with this second step. So we'll put our position right there. We're lined up. I'll add this dot here. Once I click into ellipse three, I can see that there. Again, I will just drag that circle over. So it's added it there. I'll drag the timestamp again out to align up perfectly here. I'll add another dot there. And I can just click and drag and pull it over. Awesome. So we finished the green. Two more to go. And just repeating these steps. So clicking on ellipse three, we'll drag this timestamp back so that it is in position. Now this one's going to be a little bit different. We only have two points. And so I want that time frame to expand over all three because I want them to hit at the same time. So this will be the only one that's a little bit different. Instead of three points, we only have two because it's so small. We'll hit that plus sign there. And that's actually going to slow down that yellow so that it's going to click into place really nice with the other two. And we'll finish with red here. So we'll drag this back again. We'll just add that position in. So once we've got it lined up, click the position. We need to click on the ellipse so that it grabs it. We'll have it dragged to position two. And we'll drag this back out to position three. And that's going to allow us to have it be on its final position. Ah, look, we've even made a mistake there. So we need to actually drag it back because I just edited position two. And just remember to hit this plus button. Now we have that point. Now we're able to drag it into position three. Great. So now that we've got these, let's see what it actually looks like. So I'm going to just quickly select all of these blue ellipses with the exception of number four, because these are the ones that we are using as helpers. So I'm just going to grab these super fast. And what we'll be able to do is toggle them off so that we don't have to see them. So we'll toggle these off and you can see that they've disappeared. All right, well, let's see what it looks like. I'm going to quickly hide the image here. I'm going to click off, hide the G, and let's see what those dots flying in look like. Great, so they're tracing the outline of the G. And so now we want them to disappear and the logo to appear. So let's see how we might make that happen. All right. So looking at this step here for ellipse number four, we know that if we get to the end of this timestamp here, by the time we get to the last step, this is when we're actually going to want to make it disappear. So we know that this is our opacity. So I'm just going to click a step here to have it disappear. So we'll need it to fade out over time. So I'm going to add two steps and it's going to be pretty quick here. And once I click on that point, I can then set that opacity to zero. Okay. And it's connected to this point here. And this makes it really nice because once it hits those points, you can see now it fades out and that's working exactly the way that we want. It's a little tricky, but you need to add two points. So then we'll do it for ellipse number three. If we come down here, again, I'm going to drag my time to exactly when I want it to happen. I'll hit that button right there just to add an opacity lever. And again, I will set this by clicking on the point and setting that to zero. And it's automatically going to grab it with the, point, the segment behind it. So in Onyx, I, th I think they call these segments from what I read. And I'll drag this here again to have it fade out pretty perfectly. Click on that point. Again, make that zero. It's going to have it fade out. And the final one that we need to do is our red down here. Again, just repeating those steps, adding those points in. 
I think the, the trickiest part is just getting used to editing these points if you've never done something like this before. And you can see now that our objects fly into the screen, they rotate, and they fade out. Okay, only one step left, right? So now on the fade out, we want to offset it just a little bit, but we actually want this image to do something. So we're going to want this image to actually fade in. So let's make it visible now, and we're going to need to unlock it so that we can actually edit it. And when I click on this shape, you can see now we've got these essential presets over here again and we just want it to fade in. So I've clicked fade and you can now see, once I click fade here, it's added this strip. And so this lets us know that the image is going to fade over this long time period. That's really too long. So I want to take that down just by dragging on that point and I can move this however I want it to. So we're going to have it be pretty quick on that fade. And you can see there it fades in. So pretty nice. So that will be our logo. And so now when we go back, if we hit the space bar, we'd able to see how that looks. So going all the way back, hit the space bar. Great. And there it fades in. So we could spend a lot more time making this perfect, making it fade seamlessly. Pretty quick and easy way to edit and animate logos. I think if you're a first time person animating logos, this will be a quick, easy way for you to just test it out before you go into maybe more advanced software like Adobe After Effects or Illustrator. Just put this in perspective, I've only been playing with this tool for about 30 minutes. So hopefully the more I play with it, the better I'd get at it and the more advanced things you'd be able to do. That's it for me, Tech Teardown. If there are any questions or if you enjoyed this video, please give me a subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, leave questions.